Hello. I was going to go on a nice, beautiful location today since the weather is in the upper 40s and show you how to do something. So I'm going to be relegated to doing this in my backyard. I'm going to show you some particulars of this in the second video, and it's starting to rain right now, about what it is you need to consider when doing flash photography. Now this applies to location strobe work. Uh, right now I'm using a couple of wireless triggers, but if you got a like an SC17 flash cable, the same thing applies. Now obviously this is a mundane shot. Depends on how you look at it. I can set it to program mode or aperture mode, but I'm limited to what I can do so far as separating out my background and my foreground. I'm going to show you in the second video the particulars of this, but as establishing a baseline, go out with your SC17 flash cable or if you have some wireless triggers like I have here attached to my SP28, take a baseline shot with program, okay, since you're starting out doing this. Obviously you have no control other than depth of field. You have uh, your uh, five eyes, you, know, you have your uh, ISO, your interval, uh, and your iris, i.e. the aperture on your lens. Then of course you have your illumination. Now we're talking about program mode, we're talking about even exposure. So what if, say for example, actually a cloudy day is like this are nice, except for the rain, um, in that I don't need an ND filter to separate out my background and my foreground. What I'm talking about here is the simplest methodology to improve your photography, where you can actually take mundane stuff like this, or you can take a portrait shot. This applies to really everything. And you could either drop everything in the dirt, meaning your background and your subject or your foreground, but I say B and S. No, I don't mean BS. I mean background and subject. You could drop them all into the dirt, raise your subject. I really like the easy way to think about things. I'm trying to use to teach archery and uh, still kind of do teach a shooting once in a rare while. I've got a shooting range. About the easiest things that make people uh, remember stuff because simplicity is divinity. And you really only have two principles to think about, your background and your subject. Now, they could both be on the same exposure level. You know, your background of your subject could be evenly illuminated, like a stop and a half uh, from the background, your subject. Or it could be strongly backlit, where you have, say, a five-stop variance. Well, if you just got your camera, and even if you have an ND filter, there's only so much you could do. It's like, well, you can drop the background to match your subject, but what have you done to define your subject and bring out uh, the depth in the subject as far as your specular, uh, your diffuse, and your shadow? So what I'm talking about is being able to work the scale by having light so you're able, able to drop everything in the dirt, meaning your background and your subject. You could take like 4 o'clock light and make it look like evening light or sunrise or sunset light, except for obviously the sunrise and the sunset, but I'm talking about what you're able to do with your background. Stick it in manual, drop everything in the dirt, and raise your subject. What do I mean by raising your subject? I mean by adding enough ambient light. Obviously, I'm going to take a program shot of this at, say, 1 200th of a second, ISO 400, uh, aperture f11. Well, what does that mean? Why don't I stick it in manual mode? Okay, take this boring shot, and this is applicable to anything. I've dropped out the boring background. Now, this is for backlit subjects, frontlit subjects. You have a sliding scale once you control the light that you could drop everything and raise whatever it is you want. Obviously, your flash isn't going to affect your background, but you can actually take the background outside of using an ND filter. Say, for example, you want a, uh, a depth of field of uh, ISO 1.4 or 1.8, but even at 4,000th of a second, and uh, ISO of 100, you're still not able to crank it down, then you're going to have to bring the ND filter into play. But everything else aside, you're able to bring your background, expose for your background, and then raise your subject up to whatever, whatever level it is you want. And you can take uh, fascinating, beautiful shots that way. See, I'm sure you can't see this, but it certainly doesn't look like a program shot with sticking this thing in P mode. This is applicable to portrait shots. It's applicable to wedding shots. You know, there are a lot more ways to separate out your subject and give it definition as far as specular, diffuse, and its highlight than simply, well, you know, I'm going to get a nice bokeh lens and a really good camera, and, uh, you know, I'm going to crank it out. I'm going to have some nice creamy bokeh. Well, that is wonderful and all, and that is applicable for tons and tons of stuff, but what about the case where you want to isolate something? 
you have the possibility within you that you're not actually drawing upon to take your background and your subject, whether they're the same, whether they're five stops different from each other, and raise whatever it is you want. Expose for your background. Then add the second layer of light to define what it is you want to do. Let's take an example of uh, uh, subject and background being perfectly little. Right now, everything is hazy and dull and kind of dreary. This is normally not a day you go out and take pictures. But, you know, if you live in England, for example, I'm making fun of, uh, making fun of the Brits, you know, a lot of your weather is like this. And right now, where I'm at, a lot of the weather is like this now, too. So I'm going to go out and take pictures, you know, there's no sunlight, and it's kind of dreary and overcast. You know, 40 bucks and a wireless trigger. What can I do with this board? This is just an example, for God's sake, so don't criticize me for using this. This is a teaching tool, okay? Even Zach Arias is using a plastic mannequin. Uh, looks like he <laughs> looks like he stole. <laughs> not making fun of Zach Arias. He's even using a plastic mannequin that looks like he stole from the Montgomery Ward's uh, uh, store to uh, illuminate uh, his principles on illumination. So, what could I do with boring stuff like this? I could stick it in manual. I could drop out the background. Let's say there's a dead rat under there and I can't move it. Obviously, that's not the case. We're talking about like nasty backgrounds. The world has gotten cluttered. You know, you could take a beautiful shot of something interesting. It's like, well, that background sucks. You know, even uh, I'm not able to uh, uh, dial out the background uh, with enough bokeh. Well, how about you drop everything in the gutter, meaning your background and your subject, your two principles of your photography, and then raise your subject. Stick it in manual drop everything down four stops. It doesn't matter. So, well, you say, well, right now I've got a strongly backlit, backlit subject. Like, the sun is behind me, and I want to take a picture of me, which I would normally never do. And, uh, uh, you, you need to drop it all. So, well, you've, I've got five stops of difference between my face and the sunlight in the back. It doesn't make any difference. You have got the light. You're bringing the light to your situation. And uh, depending how far away you are, how much light you need, that is a matter of another discussion. But you could drop everything into the dirt. You can make that strong 6 o'clock sun look like uh, awesome uh, 8 p.m. sun. Well, it depends on where you're at when sun sets. Right now, sun sets about 7 o'clock. And then raise your subject up. So you're constantly working on a slider. And uh, you've got two sliders, and this will take care of about 80% of the situation. So 20% that it won't take care of is where you want the bokeh. You say, I want to dial it in at about f2.8, give me that creamy bokeh with the sunlight in the background. It's like, well, one four thousandth of a second on the shutter. If you want to be shooting at f1.8 or f2 isn't enough, you're going to have to drop in an ND filter. That's fine. So that's about 20% of your situations, and that's what you need ND filters for. But I'm actually talking about applying this to the sliding scale of your background and your subject, where you're able to either drop everything and raise your subject, or drop everything to where you want and raise the subject to where you want, or eliminate the background totally. I mean, I just completely blacked out, uh, blacked out the background on this horrible, boring subject. And it's interesting. You know, this is a, this is a dreary dull ass overcast day if ever there was one. I was actually going to go out uh, to the graveyard and another place to shoot because the weather's halfway decent today, but it's already starting to sprinkle the rain a little bit, so I can prove my point anywhere. I'm not about making fancy videos, I'm about making videos that are helpful and useful. So I want you, and we're going to talk about this in greater detail in the second video, I'm going to show you something that you can mentally picture it as far as the sliding scale of what it is you mean to do and how you're able to extract out your subject regardless of what your background is and 80% roughly of the situations. The remaining 20% are where you want bokeh priority shots and 1 4,000th of a second shutter speed and f2, f2 and f1.8 or f1.4, whatever you want to shoot at, will not allow you to do that because you still have too much overexposure, in which case you're going to have to drop in an indie filter neutral density filter. Um, but start thinking about that. I got my background and my subject the same, which I do right here. My actual background and my subject are pretty much the same. I want to give separation and definition to the boring, horrible background I got here. I can actually mentally picture with my imagination what this shot can look like, look like with the proper lighting, regardless of the crappy background. I want to give definition to the beauty of the leaves that are crawling over the trellis work. Nothing else matters. 
This is no different than essentially uh, talking about rim lighting. You're exposing for uh, your diffuse. You're taking away, you know, absence, as the Greeks, uh, the, I'm a hardcore Platonist, the Greeks were very famous for, they knew something very specifically important, is that absence speaks as much uh, as presence does. I can tell as much about what someone doesn't say as by what they do say. It's actually a very important uh, uh, technique uh, used, used in detective work as well, and you need to apply that to your photography. And the way you can do that, especially, you know, you don't want to be limited by this crappy light, and I'm not limited, except for the rain that's about to pour in, but that's another matter. Being able to separate out and bring your subject to where you want in relationship to the background. Your subject and background are the same exposure value, I can separate them. If there's too much, there's five, six stops of difference between my background and my subject, doesn't matter. I'll drop them both into the dirt if I want, if that's the composition that I want, and then raise my subject to whatever the hell level I want. It's what I want here. Screw my damn camera. It doesn't know a damn thing about what I want. Every camera, no matter how effing expensive it is, wants to do one thing only, and that's turn every picture into gray, uh, baby diaper poo sludge. That's all at once. That's all they're all designed to do. That and autofocus, of course. So, we'll go over this in the second video. I'm sorry this isn't a beautiful location shot. I was going to go out to the cemetery, and then I was going to go out to the Arboretum today, since it's halfway decent weather, but I don't control the rain, and the rain is uh, really rolling in hard back that way. So, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Okay? Check the next video on this, too. Okay, bye.